Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Greg, and in this video, we are going to go over how I created the five panel mosaic of the Andromeda Galaxy. You may have seen the video about how I acquired each of the five panels. There will be a link in the description, but basically what we're going to cover in this video is the following. We're going to go over how I selected the panels that I used to uh, stitch together the Andromeda Galaxy. Then we're going to go over how I crop the panels. Then we're going to do a little bit of processing, which is uh, denoising each of the panels. And the thing about denoising the panels is it will add a little bit of headroom for stretching as I will show you within Photoshop. And then finally, the last step that we're going to cover is how to combine each of the five panels within Photoshop and how to make the different adjustments to the different panels so that they all kind of match as uh, closely as possible. And this, yes, this is one of the ways that you can create the mosaic of Andromeda. It's not an automatic stitching within Photoshop. It is basically a manual operation here. And there are other software applications where you can probably load these panels and it will uh, merge everything together and blend everything. This is not that. This is the manual approach to creating the mosaic. So with that, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that you have to do is select all the panels that you're going to use for the processing. So here's a directory that I have all the screenshots that I took during the night of imaging the five panels of M31. So basically, you just go through your images and figure out which ones were the, uh, the images that you want, depending on the sequence you took. For me, it was the core R1, R2, L1, and L2. And I moved those images over to a folder I called Working. So once you've selected the five images, which is the core, L1, L2, R1, and R2, you load those into Photoshop and crop them and save those images in the cropped folder that uh, I've created. This is just how I did that. So here I can demonstrate that. We're going to open up the core image here into Photoshop. All right, so we are going to make a copy of this and uh, we don't want to destroy the original image. So we're just going to go over here and crop out basically the watermark and just keep the star field. And then we crop it and then we save this image. We save a copy into the crop folder here. And then this is just called the core. And then I've got the original file name and then I've added crop to the end. And I've done that for L1, L2, R1, and R2 as well. So this is the core image that I've saved into the crop folder. And you can see that it is pretty pixelated here. And so at this point, I process this image a little bit with Topaz Denoise. And ideally, I would like to stretch this image just a little bit. And you can see that when I go to the levels, the way that you normally stretch images is you take the leftmost uh, pip on the levels tool and you move it over to the right to darken the image and then you take the middle pip and you move it over to the left to lighten it up and you keep uh, closing in on those extremes and that will stretch an image from a black object actually a black picture and it will bring out whatever the deep sky object is and this is basically what I do in Photoshop and many people uh, do that in Photoshop. So here, uh, as I said, there is no headroom over here uh, for uh, the ability to darken. So what I found is if you go and apply Topaz Denoise here, you will denoise the image and it will create an overhead where you can um, successfully start stretching the image. And here you can see how nice and smooth it made the core of the Andromeda galaxy here. So yeah, so we're going to do this with all five panels. And then I save these processed images. 
over into a process folder. And then I open those up into Photoshop and then I create the mosaic. All right, so after you have all of your processed images loaded into Photoshop, the thing to do is create the composite. And this is a sequence that I took these images. Here's the core. Here's R1 to the right of the core. And here's R2, the rightmost extent of the Andromeda galaxy. Then here's L1, which is to the left of the core. And then here is L2, which is the leftmost extent of the Andromeda galaxy. Okay, so then you go and you create a canvas to use as your workspace. So the canvas will be 10,000 by 5,200. All right, there you go. We're gonna to go to the core. We're gonna do Control A and Control C to copy it. Control A selects all. And then we're gonna do a Control V and that pastes the core into this huge canvas that we've just created. And here you can see that right there. Then we're gonna to go to R1 and do the same thing. Control A, Control C and Control V and that copies uh, that image on top of the core here. And then you just move this over. And I happen to know that this needs to be moved around and altered a little bit. Uh, it needs to be moved around and tilted. So uh, in Photoshop, you select the uh, layer that you want to adjust and you hit Control T and then you can see here that you can rotate this guy a little bit. And to kind of tell you where you are in relation to the background stars, I use probably about a 60% opacity, uh, transparency. And then that way I can try to match up the stars that were in one image compared to the others. And here, so you can see that M32 is just outside of the core image here. And so these images, uh, these stars right here are gonna be the stars that I'm gonna be using to try to line everything up. It's not quite right. That looks a little bit better. But with a little bit of care, you can match these up pretty well. And even if it takes a few minutes, um, it's probably okay. Yeah, these are still mismatched up here, so. Uh, that looks pretty good. All right, so we're gonna save this as it is and come back and add the other layers. But this is basically what you have to do for each of the layers and then we go and we put the opacity back to 100. Okay, you can see that uh, that looks pretty good. And you basically just layer the rest of the panels and you make the adjustment with a control T in Windows and you alter the, um, the panel uh, radially so that it matches up with the stars underneath using the opacity feature that you saw. And 
And then here, once you get all five of those panels in there and in the position that you want, you can see that they are a little bit of a different uh, intensity. The backgrounds are not really matched up necessarily all that great. So you can see down here on the lower right that I have some layers that are not selected, the, and these are copies of some of the panels. So for example, let's go to the left one. So that, that's this guy right here, and you can see that I made an adjustment to that panel, and that kind of merges with the core a little bit better. And the same thing with left two up here. So the way that I did that, here, let me uh, make another copy of the left one panel. And then all it is is a levels adjustment here. And you can see the huge overhead that I was talking about to be able to adjust these. And you just move over just so much. You can see that you can darken and go way too much. But you just adjust with levels here until you can't really see a difference between the two lines. And that's really all that I've done with all of the panels here. So let's do um, the left two. Let me uh, make another copy of that layer and make an adjustment there. So this is going to be darkened just a little bit. It's too much. So probably that right there is a pretty good, um, pretty good blending right there. And you want to have like, um, you don't want to see any of the lines between any of these panels. So here, let's go to R1 and let's make a copy of that. And then we're going to use levels to adjust a little bit, but that actually does look pretty good right now. See, it's going down a little too dark. So made an adjustment of four right there, and we're going to keep that. So we're making a copy of right two here, and then we're going to do a levels adjustment on right two. And you can see that that blends pretty nicely with the rest of the images. And this actually does look pretty good right here. So, all right, so at this point, you do want to save. And do a save as mosaic. Uh, this is a copy of my original file. So I'm going to call this video because I created this uh, live and during this video. Okay, so now this is a little bit uh, tilted off axis. So what I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flatten this image and uh, be able to adjust the tilt of, um, of M31. I'm going to crop this. So I'm going to flatten the image and discard the hidden layers. And we are going to do save as mosaic uh, video one flatten. All right, so now we're going to create a copy of that layer. We're going to hit Control T, and then we are going to tilt this a little bit, uh, a little bit like that. And we're going to save this image. We're going to come back and crop it. And once we've rotated the entire image the way that we want, we are going to zoom in over here. Whoops. Zoom in. And then we are going to crop this down. And this is going to be very similar to um, the image that you see in the video. This might actually end up being a better image than what I originally had in the video. So here we are going to go ahead and crop this. 
And all right, so here from this point, uh, all these images have been um, added together and you could actually stretch this image a little bit. And we are gonna go ahead and check that out. So here, levels, you do have a lot of uh, overhead here. And we are going to uh, brighten this up a little bit and then we're gonna darken it. And we're gonna go ahead and darken it a little bit more and brighten it just a little bit more. And yeah, I think once your pips start approaching the bell curve here, you're losing a little bit of integrity on the overall image, but there you go. That is really basically about it. Uh, you can see I could have done a better job on the panel over here on the left. And, you know, the thing to do is to go back and make an adjustment and then recreate another flat and uh, just keep playing around like that. But this is basically the method that I used to create this mosaic. So let me know what you think down below, people. And clear skies, everybody.